All right, I have about 15 minutes to do this vlog, so we're gonna make it quick. Stop and frisk, Michael Bloomberg, what on earth is going on? Viva Fry Montreal litigator turned YouTuber shooting on location in wonderful New York City. We have snuck into a playground to distract the kids for a few minutes. All right, so what is going on in the news? Michael Bloomberg has found himself in hot water for a leaked audio recording of something he said back in 2015 as relates to his policy of stop and frisk when he was mayor of New York. 95% of your murders and murderers and murder victims fit one and all. You can just take the description, Xerox it, and pass it out to all the cops. They are male minorities, 15 to 25. You put all the cops in the minority neighborhoods. Yes, that's true. Why do we do it? Because that's where all the crime is. And the way she get the guns out of the kids' hands is uh, to throw them against the wall. This leaked audio of Michael Bloomberg talking rather frankly about the implementation of the stop and frisk policy in New York really hasn't gotten that much airtime. I'm sure the fact that Michael Bloomberg is running for president and is the owner of a multi-billion dollar media company has something to do with it. Just a little something. And I had questions about this whole stop and frisk thing. Why did they implement it? Did it have any beneficial effects? And was it even constitutional to begin with? And while it's entirely possible that I am just an ignorant Canadian, I take for granted that if I have these questions, chances are other people have the same questions as well, so I looked into it. The short the short answer is that stop and frisk when implemented properly is in fact constitutional. Confirmed 8 to 1 by the Supreme Court of the United States in Terry versus Ohio. What happened in Terry versus Ohio? A 30,000 foot overview. A policeman is doing the beat, walking the beat, is on patrol. He sees one, two, three individuals who appear to be casing a store for the purposes of robbing it. He approaches the individuals to see what they're doing and seems to think that two of the three of them are packing heat. For those of you who don't watch Hollywood movies, packing heat means carrying a weapon. And sure enough, two of the three of them are in fact carrying weapons. When it gets to trial, the defense attorneys for Terry try to have that evidence thrown out on the basis that the police officer had no basis to frisk Terry in the first place. And it gets all the way up to the Supreme Court of the United States who confirm 8 to 1 that the police officer had legitimate basis to frisk Terry. And this, for those of you who are wondering, is why stop and frisk is oftentimes referred to as Terry's Law. <laughs> principles that came out of Terry versus Ohio is that a police officer could in fact stop an individual if he had suspicion that the person was up to no good. And that is the stop part of it. Once the officer stops and asks the individual some questions, if the officer has reasonable suspicion that can be articulated that the individual might be carrying a weapon, that officer then has reasonable grounds for the frisk, hence the stop and the frisk. And it is in fact a two-step process and the reasons for which the police officer has suspicions need to be able to be articulated. The police officer can say, I stopped that individual because I had a hunch they were up to no good and I frisked them because of a hunch. The police officer has to be able to articulate the reasons for which he suspected that individual was up to no good and was carrying a weapon for the purposes of the stop and the frisk. <sighs> now how does this all come back to Michael Bloomberg and New York? Well, oh geez Louise, what's up? I had a conversation with a fool who almost said gun gun. One second. Okay. Gotta finish this up. New York City, in its fight against crime, was implementing a stop and frisk policy. And while it started off on the constitutionally acceptable principles of Terry versus Ohio, it quickly escalated into something that was not constitutional at all. The NYPD, under Mayor Bloomberg's mayorship, was implementing a stop and frisk on a blanket level. It was being implemented in a way where police officers were not stopping and frisking individuals based on suspicions, based on specific sort of descriptions. They were just arbitrarily implementing a stop and frisk, and specifically in high crime areas. Stop and frisk being implemented not based on suspicions that can be articulated, just stopping and frisking as a policy as described by Michael Bloomberg. You put all the cops in the minority neighborhoods. Yes, that's true. Why do we do it? Because that's where all the crime is. And the way she get the guns out of the kids' hands is to throw them against the wall. And the stop and frisk as implemented by the NYPD was ultimately found to be unconstitutional because it wasn't operating by the Terry versus Ohio principles. It was blanket stop and frisk based on demographics and demographics alone. And that decision was Floyd versus the city of New York. <laughs> Once the practice as implemented by the NYPD was deemed to be unconstitutional, it had to be overhauled entirely to ensure that it was compliant with the principles set out in Terry v. Ohio. Starting 2014, stop and frisk was greatly reduced, and as of 2017, it was virtually non-existent. Now appreciate this, at the peak of the stop and frisk policy as implemented in New York City, almost 700,000 people were stopped and frisked in 2011. <laughs> 
Supporters of the stop and frisk policy cite the drastic reduction in crime in New York City as evidence that the stop and frisk policy was working. Opponents of the stop and frisk policy point out that as of 2017, there were a little over 10,000 stop and frisks compared to 685,000 in 2011. Notwithstanding that virtually 98% reduction, crime has not risen in New York City. On the contrary, it continued to go down. So setting aside the constitutionality of the practice, there is an argument as to whether or not the stop and frisk actually had the positive impact on reducing crime that people attribute to it. But alas, while living in an absolute police state might in fact reduce crime to zero, we like our freedoms in North America. And the statistical reality is that although the stop and frisk policy has all but been eliminated in New York, crime has not gone up, it's continued to go down. And now the NYPD has implemented a policy to ensure that when it enacts... I'm done in two seconds. And now the NYPD has enacted a policy to ensure that when it does stop and frisk, it is doing it in a constitutionally acceptable manner. I'm on paper. All right, I had better go now. I think I've pushed my luck to the max. I hope you got something out of this. If you like my... You see a police officer? We're gonna go. If you like my content, be sure to like, share, subscribe, hit the notification bell. Drop a comment in the comment section below. Merch links are in the pinned comment. And now you know your vlog. Peace out. Booyah.